Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron, I'm a junior doctor working in London. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at how we can take a focused cardiovascular history. And then we're gonna have a look at four possible cases that could come up in your cardiology history station in your OSCE and how we would go about presenting those cases. Uh, if you've got your finals coming up very soon and you want to jump straight to the cases, then please go for it. Also, just a little plug for me before we start. If you haven't checked it out, then please check out my other video on the eight steps on how to structure your history in an OSCE station with all the tips like summarizing, open close questions, chunk and check. I'll leave a little link kind of somewhere up there. Uh, please check it out so all of this makes a little bit more sense. So let's start by taking that eight step approach and then tailoring it for any cardiovascular history where 99% of the time the presenting complaint is chest pain. Okay, so step one is initiate the session and this involves three things. Number one, introduce yourself. Number two, confirm you have the correct patient. And then number three, start to try and build some sort of patient rapport. So, hi there, my name is Aaron Kiru. Is it Mr. Smith? Perfect. I'm really sorry, I understand you've come in with some chest pain. What I've done is I've asked for some pain relief, it should be on its way. In the meantime, is it okay if I ask you some questions? I think offering that pain relief at the start, whether you're talking to a patient in real life or even whether you're talking to an actor, straight away it kind of gets them on your side, so it's a really good start. Step two is screen for other symptoms. The point of this step is to elicit if there are any other main problems that this patient has come in with. So apart from that chest pain, have you noticed anything else at all? Okay, so you mentioned chest pain and palpitations. Anything else? I think the point of this is so you can kind of group the problems as number one, number two, number three, and then start to tackle them individually, which we'll go on to next. Okay, step three now is gathering information. So this is where we tackle each of the symptoms individually. We start with a very open question, very broad, such as, tell me about your chest pain. We let the patient speak, listen, 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 let them give you all the information. Once they've finished, then we move on to very closed and very focused questions. And these are kind of trying to fill in the gaps, things that they haven't quite mentioned. These focus questions are quite variable for each symptom, but there are quite a few mnemonics that are really helpful. So with any pain symptom, so whether it's chest pain or abdominal pain, you can just use a mnemonic Socrates. So S stands for sight, so where is the pain? O stands for onset, did the pain come on gradually or slowly? C stands for character, is it a dull pain? Is it a sharp pain or is it kind of a burning pain? R stands for radiation, so apart from the chest, does the pain move anywhere else? A stands for any associated symptoms, so when the chest pain comes on, do you notice anything else at the same time? Okay, it's fine, so you feel hot and clammy at the same time, that's great. Then T stands for time, how long does the pain last for? E stands for exacerbating or relieving factors, so does anything in particular make the pain better? Does anything in particular make the pain worse? And finally, S stands for severity, so on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst pain ever, how would you score the pain? For other symptoms like palpitations, the kind of questions that you would ask would be, do you feel like your heart is going faster than normal? Does it feel regular? Uh, can you tap out the rhythm on a table? And do you drink a lot of caffeinated drinks like coffee? So for the symptoms like pain, it's really easy for the focus questions, just use Socrates. Lots of the other symptoms don't have kind of mnemonics to use. So if you think it'd be helpful, I can kind of come up with a list of all the kind of common symptoms, all their focus questions. If that would be something you guys are interested in, then just let me know in the comments. I'll leave a link in the description to a document. Okay, step four is summarize. So examiners absolutely love to kind of see students summarize in OSCE and this comes straight after that section where we've got lots of information. So I think it's kind of perfect time to do it. So just to summarize, you've told me you've had some chest pain lasting about three days. It's six out of 10. It gets worse when you take a big breath in and it gets slightly better when you seem to lie down. And also at the same time, you've noticed your heart racing, but it does seem regular, but quite fast. Is that correct? Okay, on to step five and that's risk factors. So this is a part of the history that personally I always used to forget when I did my close and focus questions and that's why I've given it its own section. The point of this part of the history is to really help you narrow down your differential and it also kind of signposts to the examiner this is exactly what you're doing rather than just kind of blindly asking questions. So for a cardiovascular history, there's four kind of groups of risk factor questions that I like to ask. So you've got the vascular risk factors such as do you have high blood pressure, do you have diabetes, do you smoke? The MI symptoms, such as do you have nausea, do you have vomiting, do you ever feel short of breath, do you ever feel your heart racing? Then you've got the VTE risk factor questions, such as any calf swelling, uh, any recent long distance travel or recent surgery, do you take the oral contraceptive pill, any previous clots on the leg? And then finally, the infective endocarditis risk factor question, which is any recent dental work. Okay, on to step six now, which is your systems review. And this is where you do a body system screen of symptoms 
to kind of catch anything you might have missed in your initial screening right at the start. So in terms of your cardiovascular history, system review questions would be, do you ever feel short of breath? Do you ever feel your heart racing? Any ankle swelling? Any leg pain on walking? And do you ever feel dizzy or have you lost consciousness? Something I like to add after your system review questions is to ask about constitutional symptoms. These are a group of four symptoms that can pretty much affect any body system. And they are fever, weight loss, tiredness, and loss of appetite. Okay, step seven now, which is finding out about the patient's perspective. And this is where you try and find out the patient's ideas, concerns, expectations, the ICE section. So do you have any idea what might be going on? Is there anything you're particularly worried about? And what are you really hoping for today from the doctors? It's really important though, not to just kind of clump this at the end of your history, rather try and be dynamic, kind of fill it in depending on the patient's cues when they maybe bring something up themselves. And finally, step eight, which is your background history. So that's your past medical history, drug history, uh, family history and social history. At this point, it's really nice to kind of signpost to the examiner, you're moving on to this section of the history. So I'm gonna ask some background questions now. Are you normally fit and well? Do you have any medical problems, etc., etc.? And that's it. That's just one way to take a focused cardiovascular history. What I think is almost just as important though is taking that eight step approach and then translating it into a clear format to present your findings from your history really concisely. So the approach that I use to present my history is I start with a brief introduction of the patient. So the patient's name, their age, their occupation. I then go to the main presenting complaint with all that information that I got from my open and closed questions. Then any kind of associated symptoms I got from my screening. I then go to the patient's eyes, so the ideas, concerns, expectations. I then mention any relevant negatives to the history, and this usually comes from those risk factor questions we talked about. And then finally, I try to finish with my top differential. One way to go even further in your presentation and really stand out is to mention other differentials potentially lower down your list. You could also go back to your top differential and try to think about what might be the most likely cause of that differential. And this would be based on the answers you got from your risk factor questions. So say you thought your top differential was a stroke. Based on those risk factors the patient's given you, you could try to predict, is this more likely an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke? And that's just kind of what you think based on the history. Obviously in real life, you do an examination, etc., etc. And even further, you could go and try and talk about some of the complications from your top differential and what you'd want to look out for. So say in this case, you're worried about a myocardial infarction, you could say possible complications I'd want to exclude would be things like a cardiac tamponade or arrhythmias. I think that kind of really gives a nice finish to your presentation. Okay, so this first case is very classic for your cardiology OSCE, and this is a case of pericarditis. I had the pleasure of talking to this 19-year-old gentleman today who comes in with a two-day history of sharp central chest pain, six out of 10, some of which which radiates to the left shoulder. The pain seems to be pleuritic in nature, which is worse when he's lying down and is relieved on sitting forward. He also reports a one week history of constitutional symptoms, which include a fever and a cough. He seems to be most worried about a potential heart attack, which his dad had when he was 62. The reassuring thing is that relevant negative findings include that there were no VTE risk factors, there's no evidence of syncope, and there's also no weight loss. So if I put all of this together, my top differential would be acute pericarditis. Other differentials that I think are less likely would include things like cardiac causes of chest pain, such as acute coronary syndrome, respiratory causes of pain, such as a pulmonary embolus, abdominal causes such as gastroenteritis, as well as MSK causes such as musculoskeletal chest pain. With regard to the cause of the pericarditis, the absence of any signs of recent travel or any kind of signs of TB, plus the one week of constitutional symptoms that the patient reports, makes me think the most likely cause would be viral pericarditis, in which case I'd be thinking more Coxsackie virus. Possible complications of pericarditis that I'd want to look out for and exclude would include pericardial effusions as well as cardiac tamponade. So on to case number two, which is your classic history of a PE. So I took a history today from this 30 year old lady, Jane Smith, who's a fashion designer. She reports a six hour history of eight out of 10, sharp right-sided chest pain that's pleuritic in nature. Also of note is she's had one episode of hemoptysis. She returned from a 10 hour flight yesterday and she's noticed a swollen right calf for the last 24 hours. And she's also been taking the oral contraceptive bill for the last 12 months. Her main concern in all of this is she's quite keen for a baby soon and wants to come off the OCP. Uh, my relevant negative findings are that reassuringly there's no evidence of syncope or weight loss. So putting all of this together, my top differential would be a pulmonary embolus. 
Other differentials that I think would be less likely but important to consider would be other cardiac causes such as an aortic dissection, respiratory causes of chest pain such as a pneumothorax, abdominal causes such as gastroenteritis or musculoskeletal causes such as MSK chest pain. With regard to the possible causes of the pulmonary embolus, the absence of any kind of classic signs of a myocardial infarction or any right-sided infective endocarditis, plus the fact that she mentioned she's had this calf swelling and pain for the last 24 hours, makes me think most likely of a PE secondary to a deep vein thrombosis. On to case three now, which came up in my OSCE, which is a history of aortic dissection. So I had the pleasure of meeting this 50 year old gentleman today, Mr. John Smith, who works as a plumber. He comes in with a two week history of nine out of 10 tearing central chest pain, which radiates through to the back. Also of note is that he does admit to two similar episodes of central chest pain, this time radiating to the left shoulder. And he also reports to be a very heavy smoker with a past medical history of hypertension and type two diabetes. What he's most worried about is a potential heart attack given his kind of extensive smoking history. My relevant negative findings are that reassuringly there were no VTE risk factors, there's no evidence of syncope or weight loss. So putting all of this together, I think my top differential would be an aortic dissection. Other differentials I'd want to consider, but I think would be lower down my list would be other cardiac causes of chest pain, such as a myocardial infarction, respiratory causes such as a pulmonary embolus, abdominal causes such as gastroenteritis and musculoskeletal causes such as MSK chest pain. With regard to the possible cause of the aortic dissection, I think the absence of any past medical history of connective tissue diseases such as Marfan's or Ehlers-Danlos, plus given the extensive vascular history, including kind of angina, uh, diabetes and high blood pressure, I think my top kind of cause of this would be atherosclerosis related aortic dissection. Possible complications of an aortic dissection that I'd want to exclude would include proximal propagation. So that would present with things like a pericardial tamponade, rupture of the dissection into the pericardial and pleural cavities, and also distal propagation of the aortic dissection giving things like radio radio delay or unequal pulses and blood pressure between the two arms. And this last case is your classic history of acute coronary syndrome. So I had the pleasure of meeting this 50 year old gentleman, Mr. John Smith, who's a retired shopkeeper. He comes in today with a nine out of 10 central chest pain that radiates to the left arm that did not respond to his GTN spray. Also of note is he does report suffering from quite severe angina, especially on walking, but normally this responds quite quickly to his GTN spray. He's a heavy smoker and also suffers from type two diabetes. What he seems to be most worried about is a heart attack, especially given that he feels his angina has been worsening recently. My relevant negative findings are that reassuringly there were no VTE risk factors, there's no evidence of syncope, and there's no evidence of weight loss. So putting all this together, I think my top differential would be acute coronary syndrome. Other differentials that I think are less likely but important to consider would be cardiac causes of chest pain, such as an aortic dissection, respiratory causes such as a pulmonary embolus, abdominal causes such as gastroenteritis, as well as MSK causes such as MSK pain. With regard to the possible cause of the acute coronary syndrome, I think his vascular history is very extensive and would point towards this. Possible complications of ACS I'd want to exclude would include immediate complications such as arrhythmias, early complications such as pericarditis, as well as later complications such as ventricular failure. Okay, there you go guys. Sorry for a super content heavy video today. Um, we've gone over two things. In the first half, we've looked at how to take a very focused cardiovascular history. And in the second half, we've gone over four kind of very common cases that could come up in your OSCE. I really hope you found it useful, guys. If you did, then please drop a like in this video and please consider subscribing to the channel. Please share it with your mates at med school. Also, I do literally read every single comment. So if you did like it, then please let me know in the comments. And also please let me know kind of what other videos would be helpful. Would kind of a respiratory or abdominal kind of style video very similar to this be helpful? Please let me know and I'll try my best to get the content out for you guys. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.